Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church, St. Joseph, Michigan, and to our online worship service. We're delighted that you have uh, tuned in to us, and we ask that you would also share and like this link so that others may also join us in worship. Begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, during his earthly ministry, your Son Jesus healed the sick and raised the dead. By the healing medicine of the Word and sacraments, pour into our hearts such love toward you that we may live eternally. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Lamentation chapter 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes, and let him be filled with insults. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own free will, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urged Titus that as he had started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need, that there may be fairness. As it is written, whoever gathered much has nothing left over, and whoever gathered little has no lack. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. 
And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for twelve years, and who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. She said, for she said, If I touch even his garment, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, And yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, Little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was twelve years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why bother? Why keep trying? Why keep going? What's the use? These are questions that all of us in the room have asked ourselves at one point or another. It's a question that has grounded many plans and cut many things short. It's the question that comes out of frustration and hopelessness. A failing relationship, a medical treatment, a change in your life, a disappointing result. Why bother trying? How many of us have given up our hopes, dreams, plans, given up on our lives? How many times have situations in our lives looked so unfavorable so that all we could say was, why bother? That's what Jesus overhears somebody telling Jairus today. Your daughter's died, Jairus. Why bother Jesus? Your plan didn't work, Jairus. It's too late. Give it up. Why bother Jesus? Remember, Jairus is an important leader in the community and the church. He had fallen on his face, pleading Jesus to go to his house, lay his hands on his dying daughter, and save her from death. He loved his daughter so much that he wasn't embarrassed to plead and to fall at Jesus' feet in the middle of that crowd. For Jairus must have had it all. Money, house, wife, food, clothing, servants, status. He probably wasn't a man who went around pleading very much for anything. But just now, at this moment, with his daughter at death's door, he didn't have it all. So he had to bother Jesus. Come to my house, he implored. And Jesus listened to him. So when they're on their way to Jairus's, Jesus is interrupted by a woman with an illness, an incessant flow of blood. And Jesus' power heals her immediately, instantly. Jairus might have been in a hurry, but after seeing this miracle, he was sure that Jesus would also heal his daughter. If he healed this woman, certainly he'll heal my daughter too. But as Jairus watches Jesus caring for this woman, Somebody from his household comes with the worst news possible. She's dead, Jairus. I thought Jesus would heal my daughter, just as he healed this woman. I mean, he said he would. He said he was coming to my house and healed my daughter, Jairus must have thought. So they advised Jairus. Why continue to trouble Jesus? Why bother? They're right. It's too late. She's dead. I embarrassed myself for nothing. Went out of my way to go get Jesus. Could have been next to my daughter as she passed. Could be with my wife right now. Why did I leave my daughter? Why bother? Jairus could have thought all of these thoughts, and maybe more. But he didn't have time, because Jesus didn't allow Jairus to collapse into himself or let his thoughts and his feelings get better of him with this crushing news, because immediately Jesus looks into Jairus' eyes and says, Don't be afraid, Jairus. Only believe. So they keep walking to Jairus' house. And Jesus, by this time, had thinned the group. It's now just Jesus, 
Jairus, Peter, James, and John. What do they think Jesus is going to do? What else is there to do? Yeah, okay, Jesus heals and casts out demons, but this girl is neither sick or possessed. So why are they still going to her? Why bother Jesus? Why bother Jesus? There were weepers and criers at Jairus' house when Jesus gets there. This could mean one of two things. Either the girl was dead long enough for news to spread and the criers to arrive, or the girl was expected to die anyway. So the criers were already there to begin mourning when death arrived. So Jesus tells them that there's no need for all that wailing and weeping, for the girl is only asleep. They scorn Jesus at his words. Of course she's dead. Why are you here? Why bother? Up until this point in the Gospel of Mark, it seems like everybody has been getting from Jesus what they've prayed for. The lepers are healed, the paralytics are walking, the withered hands were made straight, the the disciples have survived a storm, and now, just now, this woman has been healed from her flow of blood, but not Jairus. His request was simple. My daughter is dying. Lay your hands upon her and make her well. Seems like Jesus can't do that. Because she's not dying anymore. She's dead. Seems like Jairus is the first one in Mark's gospel not to get what he prayed for. He prayed for healing. But his daughter's past that point. So why bother? Jairus could send Jesus on his way right now. I didn't get what I prayed for. What's the use of having Jesus around? Why bother? But Jesus isn't done with Jairus and his daughter. So Jesus walks up to the girl's room with Jairus, probably Jairus' wife, Peter, James, and John. Jesus goes to her deathbed, puts her lifeless hand in his, and speaks to ears that have been shut, that cannot hear. Little girl, I say to you, rock. With this word, Jesus robbed death of its prey. So, Jairus didn't get exactly what he prayed for. He didn't manage to get Jesus there quickly enough to prevent the little girl from dying. It seems like Jairus got something better. Jairus got to see the miracle of miracles with his own eyes. He saw Jesus crushing the power of death right in front of him with his own daughter. And all of this reminds me of one of the sermons of the 12th century French monk, Bernard of Clairvaux, where he says, Unquestionably, we can hope for one of two things, that Jesus will grant either what we ask or what he knows is better for us. We do not know what to pray for as we ought, but he has pity on our ignorance. He accepts our prayer in his goodness, but does not give us what is not expedient for us or what we should not be given so quickly. Therefore, 
Our prayer will not be fruitless. In other words, Jesus will either give us what we ask for or he'll give us something better. What he knows will be better. So why bother? Why go to Jesus when all seems lost and failed and frustrated and hopeless? Because in his infinite mercy, he will give us what we ask or something better. We go to Jesus, we bother Jesus because he has promised to give us what we ask in his name. And please hear this in the best way possible. Jesus is here to be bothered by you and by me. He is here for you and for me to go to him and go to him alone. Not to go to anybody else. Not to go to yourself or any other saviors. So when Jairus is told she's dead, why bother the teacher anymore? He should answer, because that's why the teacher's here, isn't it? He's here to seek and save the lost. He's here to light those in darkness. And he's here to give life to the dead. What Jesus did to Jairus' daughter is exactly what he came here to do for you and to do for me. Jesus was grieved enough by our own sin that he gave himself on the cross as the greatest gift for you and for me. And he died and was raised to give you and to give me that same resurrection in him. The ultimate gift. It seems like Jesus doesn't mind being bothered. In fact, it seems like he loves being bothered. He would rather you have bother him and go to him than go to somebody else. He would rather you go to him, the only source of salvation, joy, peace, and love, than to be disappointed with ourselves and with others. So I ask again, so why bother? That's why we bother. We bother, we go with prayers and supplications to the one, the only one, who can give us all we need. But it's out of his goodness and his mercy, without any merit of our own, any goodness on our part. So when we pray and we don't get exactly what we asked for, we know, we know, we will get something better. So do not fear, only believe. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In our worship, we also bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord, and we pray God's blessings on their use, that the gospel may be proclaimed among us and in our community. And we thank you for that support. Let us pray. Great are you, O Lord, and greatly to be praised. You rule earth and sea and sky. We give you thanks for the blessings of creation and life that comes from your abundant goodness. Give to your church boldness to speak of your awesome deeds and sing always of your righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, as you preserved Noah and his family and brought forth new life from the ark, under the promise of your covenant, bless now our families also. Make marriages strong and fruitful according to your will. Let your word rule in every home, uniting its members in forgiveness and causing your Son to dwell in every heart through faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord of might, spare us and future generations from wickedness. Give blessing to our nation and its leaders to rule according to your good pleasure. Protect the members of our armed forces, police, and other public servants. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, through your Son and his reconciling death, we receive all good gifts, healing, and sustenance. We bring before you the sick and those in need, those who are on our hearts and minds. Give them healing and protection, and encourage them in the midst of this life by the recognition of your, heaven, of your Father's providence, known in Christ our Savior, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.